My guest on this week's episode of Sus and Search is Ryan Jones, Marketing Manager at SEO Testing. Ryan is a veteran digital marketer, blogger, conference presenter, and a must-follow on social media. He has a wide breadth of SEO experience working in-house and agency side. Ryan recently started a role at SEO Testing, an SEO tool suite designed to make SEO testing and reporting easier and less time consuming. I'll talk to Ryan about how more and more stakeholders are asking for data-driven conversations. It's a higher standard. SEO tests are an easy way to demonstrate value, get buy-in, and meet stakeholder demands. I'm going to ask Ryan about SEO tests generally and how to use the tool suite from SEO testing to have better conversations. We'll also spend some time talking about the extremely impressive company blog at SEO testing. The posts are not overly promotional and generally come from the company's core value to share all the information they have. After you listen to this episode, check it out. If you're looking for a place to start, I recommend Ryan's excellent post from earlier this year about Google Search Console data limitations. Grab something cold to drink and join me for a conversation with Ryan Jones. We'll talk about common pitfalls of SEO tests. We'll talk about testing as a low-risk way to assess strategy. We'll spend a little time talking about Ryan's love for NBA basketball. All right, Ryan Jones, welcome to Sudden Search. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah, all good. Glad to be here. Busy, busy few weeks with being at Brighton and uh, catching up on, on new job stuff and sorting out old job stuff. But uh, yeah, there, there we go. That's to be expected with uh, jumping into a new role. I can imagine. That's where that's where I wanted to start. You made this big career change. You were in-house and now you're working at SEO Testing. Uh, how is the new job going? Tell us about it and, and, and why you, you decided to make the leap. Yeah, cool. I mean, in terms of in terms of how it's going, it's it's, it's obviously a big change. With uh, so for the previous two and a half years, I was focused in house exclusively on SEO for an e commerce brand. Whereas now, whilst I'm still in house, I'm more of a, I've got my title now is marketing manager. So whilst I still handle a lot of stuff related to SEO and and all, all like there'll also be stuff that jumps in with social media marketing, a bit of paid advertising, and kind of managing things all throughout the funnel rather than just focusing on improving rankings and time of page and all that kind of stuff so there's a a whole load of new things to be learned and new responsibilities for me to to take on and obviously a SaaS startup is uh a lot different (laughs) to an an e-commerce retailer that's been there for sort of well going on 10 years so so there's a whole load of new processes and a whole load of things to to unlearn from uh from my last role but it's uh it's fun it's exciting and uh ready ready to jump right into it well, I, I, I know you're new on the job. I don't want to put you on the spot and give you a bunch of questions about SEO testing, but I noticed that you, I think it's important for our audience to know it's not one tool. It's like a toolbox with a bunch of different things for strategists to use, uh, different tools they can run. Uh, I'm sorry, different tests they can run, uh, different sorts of ideas behind each one of those. And yeah, uh, exactly. I, I, I noticed that you guys have a new one. So unless my research deceives me, you now have a tool which allows people to evaluate traffic from branded and non-branded. It's yeah, a really yeah, nice, nice interface, and it looks great. Uh, I, if somebody who serves clients, I think this is great because clients don't pay us that much for branded traffic, or even though we, we might try and convince them that's important, uh, they, they really want the non-branded traffic. So yeah. tell us about the, the tool and how people are using it. Yeah, I mean, in, well, in, I mean, in terms of the tool, it's, it started a few few years ago, really, but it, it more came, so Nick, who's the founder, it more came from his personal need of of running SEO tests and and then tracking the results in Search Console just manually, which is, as you can imagine, just takes a lot of time and a lot of pulling data into Google Sheets or Excel or whatever it is is that you use. So that the tool kind of established itself from that. It uh, Nick built it more for his own personal use, and then as it got sort of sent out to a few different SEOs to, to out and maybe give some feedback, it. We, they, he kind of realized that uh, it could definitely become more wide scale and, and it and the whole kind of thing developed from there to, to whereas the point now we're a, a full SEO tool and uh, we've got there's a whole bunch of different types of tests in there you can just test single pages we allow you to do split testing and then beyond the actual testing and, re- and the testing point of view there's a whole different bunch of reports in there as well that will help you pull data and yeah, as you just mentioned there, there's the the brand versus non-brand report, which we just released last week. So that's really a really new one, which the main goal for, for that is to, especially if you're a PR agency, whether even if you're just not an SEO agency and you're a PR agency, to show clients the value of the the non-brand traffic or, all the, or indeed the brand traffic that you bring in. 
and uh, and just make it easier to to show the value of what was maybe undervalued SEOs do on a day to day basis. Totally, I, I love this tool because we want to just show value. So you've got you've got a really clever way of doing it, and the interface is really intuitive. So it looks nice, and so for for somebody who's not in SEO every day, they can understand it and they can make sense of it. Um, you know what what I want to ask you about is SEO tests generally. So yep. testing, you know, is super popular PPC. It's been that way my whole career. Um, I can think of it's it's really easy to run a PPC test. And I've spoken to a, a number of SEOs who are really keen on running SEO tests, but I think it's a little bit harder in SEO to get that meaningful data. Uh, you, know, you might be making several SEO changes over the course of the month. A positive or negative outcome might be the result of yeah something that you weren't testing against. So you could get false positives. I, I, I bet you run into this stuff. I'm, I'm sure I'm sure you guys at SEO testing find that there are these pitfalls of a good SEO test. What are some of those pitfalls that you've seen? And how do you suggest people avoid them? How, how do you avoid stepping into uh, correlation as causation, all these sorts of faulty uh, faulty assessments? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think the, the biggest pitfall that people tend to fall into and and I, I first fell into it as well when, when working on other sites previously to working at SEO testing. But I think the biggest one is statistical significance. You've got I'm to, guilty. Yeah, you've got to, you've definitely got to make sure that your site actually has enough traffic running through it to, to, for the tool, whether you use a tool or not, to be able to ascertain whether what you've changed has actually impacted it or whether it's just been someone else on the site or maybe, maybe your servers were running slow that week and there's more bounce more bounces coming from the certs and therefore Google might have knocked you down that particular week because of unrelated causes. So yeah, definitely making sure you've got enough organic traffic running through your site. But then uh, at the same time, you've got to make sure that with Google running these algorithm updates and almost every week now, it seems you've got to make sure that it's not something to do with that rather than the changes you've made. But uh, there's, there's all different types of tests you can do and and whether you whether you run a single test or a split test that that might be better for you at that particular stage so it's just it's one of those ones that you definitely kind of have to learn as you go but then uh, as you as you get more experience with it and you you run more tests and obviously tests fail all the time so the the biggest thing is to make sure you learn from each and every one i've learned more from the tests that have failed than the the tests that i've seen increases in organic traffic i agree with that i said the, the... The way I was thinking about this too with testing. So if I I want to test something, there's a, and it's a real test, and I I have some strategy I want to take on. Then there's a chance that that might go bad, right? That there's yeah. evidently there's a, inevitably there's going to be one that goes south. So with a tool like yours, I imagine I could do something like this. I'm I'm not going to do a test across my whole site. I'm going to do a test with maybe a section of the site, or maybe just a yeah. little bit. It reduces the risk. Right, it's, it's, it's like it's not as devastating if that test goes south. Am I thinking about that in the right way? Testing is like a kind of a low risk way to test a strategy, and and how do the tools help us with it? Yeah, I, I was absolutely thinking about that in the right way. I, I mean, I, I was reading over something this morning, and uh, if pretty much ninety five percent of the tests that we run and, and the tests that customers run are single page SEO tests or single yeah. tests. Where and that that could be anything from a really really small change on a site, so whether it's just ch- changing a, a, t- a page title or completely reworking the content. But the the key point is it's being done on just that one single page, and not any other pages on your site. We we do have customers that where if they run e-commerce sites, that's a, a big one as well, where they'll split test. So they'll take maybe fifteen pages versus another 15 pages and make changes to how the page looks or how it runs or, or whatever. But in terms of the main use case for the tool that we, we found that customers are using is they're, they're using it to prove concept rather than, and they're using it to get buy-in straight away for, for larger tests. So if they can show that a content refresh has worked for this one particular blog post that was published two years ago, then you're more likely to get buy-in and budget and time allocations to to go through and, and do it on all of the other blog posts. So rather than taking that big risk straight away and uh, and changing 70% of your blog, you can prove the concept on, on one page. And obviously if that goes well, then great, you, you've got buy-in or, or if 
if your organic traffic lowers, the the is you've only lost traffic on that one page, and you can learn from that and and go again. Yeah, I love that, and I love uh, I love using these sorts of tests as a way to get more budget, right? If, Absolutely. If the, if the stakeholder is has proof of uh, data that suggests that this will be a positive thing, they'll get more value. What? Why not? So it's it's a it makes the sale much easier unless I don't know something where you have to be super salesy. So yeah, I want to go back. I want to go back to something you said um, about statistical significance because I am guilty of this too. I, I mean, I I I'm, I messed this up more times than I care to count. Is testing something that we work with a lot of small business folks, and I'm I think about them a lot these days with GA four transferring over and these sort of sorts of like uh, changes to our industry. Um, can they do testing? Is there is there an option for small businesses to do testing? And if so, how do they do that? They just may not get statistical significance other than to like their homepage or a handful of internal pages. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. I mean, in terms of small sites, there there might be a, a case where you you kind of just need to go back to to the traditional way of SEO testing. So I mean, I mean, we've always done SEO testing, but I mean, I suppose if you think about it, when maybe when you started, you would make a change on a page and then just track rankings rather than orga- organic traffic. Pretty so if, if you are finding that you're in an industry where the search volume is really low and even if you're one of the biggest players, you still might just not really get that massive amount of organic traffic for that kind of stuff. So like maybe if you think manufacturing or something like that, where it's incredibly niche and you're only sort of seeing a few hundred visits to your website, then you, you can definitely still do SEO testing. It just might not be in the way that we think about it now. So you just need oh. to you just need to track what what metrics are are working for you. So it might be a case where you're not really focusing on getting massive amounts of organic traffic, but maybe you're focusing on just keeping customers on your page a little bit longer or or making sure that they click through and book a demo or something like that. Yeah. So you can you can definitely test. You just have to make sure that you're looking for the right results. I like that a lot. All right, I want to shift gears. You, you, I want to compliment you and Nick uh, and anyone else who's writing on this terribly impressive blog you guys have. I will be sure to link to it in the show notes. You've gotten on there uh, a time or two, I, I noticed. So yeah, what I, what I like about it is a lot of the content isn't actually about the tool. So this isn't promotional content. Some of it is, uh, but a lot of it are like very useful things where I was like, oh, I'm going to standard operating procedures. I love it as an agency owner. Interview questions for new employees. I love that as a as a uh, person who hires a lot of people. So, you guys are posting frequently. The content is really good. It's really applicable. It's not promotional. I, I would tell people go to it if you're just an SEO because you're not going to get inundated with this is our product and uh, a bunch of featured dumps. Like, what is the what are you guys doing with this blog? And I want to try to promote it and let people know about it. Yeah, cool. Well, I mean, it, it all links back to to our core values as a as a company i mean one one of our core values is purely to teach everything that we know so we know like maybe if, if you think about my background i've been doing seo for not too far off a decade so there's naturally stuff i've been working i've worked in-house i've worked agency side i've worked on massive websites and i worked on those tiny websites that only get a few a few hundred organic visits a month um so there's there's naturally some experience there that that I can get. There's we work with people who are, who are maybe outside contributors to the blog who bring their own experience, and obviously Nick's got a lot of experience in this kind of arena as well. So it's is one of our main core values is is purely to to teach everything we know. We're, we're not using the blog to try and sell the tool at all. We want to make sure that we get that knowledge out there so that people can do SEO themselves, whether they're just whether they have one blog website that they're just trying to do as a passion project or where maybe they've only been working in SEO for a few months and they're just trying to figure their way out or whether they've been doing it for 10 years and they realize that there's still stuff that they need to know. We just want to make sure that that information's out there and and get it to as many people as possible. And then at the same time, we, we want to make sure that we're with the tool as well, that we're saving people time. And that's like the biggest selling point is we want to make sure that we're, uh, saving people time so that they don't have to go into search console and manually export data and all of that. But, uh, but yeah, the, the main core value is, is purely to teach everything that we know and, and be really generous with the knowledge that we have. 
I love that. Yeah, we have a, we, we have a uh, similar core value and a thirst for learning. So that's that. That's why we're talking here today. So it's uh, that those dovetail nicely. I, I, you mentioned Search Council, and we were talking about the blog. You did have a blog about the limitations of Google Search Council data, and I'm I'm actually like embarrassed. I don't know when this was, like maybe two years, two or three years ago, where I really realized how limiting that a thousand rows of data in Native Search Council was. It's it's kind of yeah. shocking when you see it for the first time, and then you compare it to someone using the API. So uh, you know, I I think, for example, I give somebody an example of how this might work. So if you had a te- something you wanted to know, all the all the keywords where I'm on page two and I'm close, but I, I'm not with maybe if I did a little bit of work on those pages, uh, I would see a boost. I'd see a, a boost in my traffic. So it's in, entire, it's entirely possible if you're just relying on native search console that you're only getting a portion of the real results. Yeah. So you guys have a tool called striking distance keywords. It's a report for this exact purpose. Uh, kind of help our audience understand how much more robust the results would be by connecting to the API versus just relying on native search council. Yeah. Uh, the biggest thing, again, links back to saving people time is yeah. we, we build the report exclusively so you can you can log into your dashboard, head to the report section, and then straight away, once you've run, run the report, you're greeted with your full list of striking distance keywords that we, we give you where it's listed so you know kind of what work needs to be done and then from that you can either just share the dash share the report with other users who have an seo testing account or you can export it and then you can you know what you need to do from there you can yeah. explore your list and you've got all the information right there on all the keywords that you need and you can kind of go to your decision makers and the people who are, are ready to give you budget for this kind of project and then and then naturally then you could obviously uh run different seo tests on these keywords and then see if that's having an impact but uh but yeah the, the biggest thing is we want to make sure that people don't have to go through the pain that nick had to go through and people have had to go through years prior and manually finding all this data and then making sense of it in a google sheet we can where we can just use the api and do it for you when you can just head into the report and it's all, it's all there and you can just get straight into the optimization work that's going to actually drive results. Well, it's a, it's a really impressive tool you guys have, but that in particular is something I wanted to call out because that is a huge time saving. It's a strategist dream, really, like to just be able to work on strategy and not have to do all this sort of like data collecting and sanitizing. So I think that's a very useful tool. There's a, there's another thing from your, from your post that I remember, which is the next limitation of Search Council is 16 months of data. So yeah. you have uh, you have this time problem where, you know, for most of my career, I've done something like this, where I've gone like, we just wrapped up April. Okay, so I'm going to do April 2022 data compared to, I'm sorry, April 2023 data compared to April 2022 data. And that was a reasonably good way of showing, you know, you did better this year than last year. It accounts for seasonality and that sort of thing. But then, you know, we had COVID, we had, you know, and for us, we work with automotive dealerships. So there was a chip shortage. There's, uh, you know, interest rates spiking. So more and more, 16 months of data might not be enough because just so many abnormalities year to year. So you might want to throw out 2022 and go back and look at 2021 or all the way back to 2019. Uh, how do you how do you avoid this issue or how do you get more data um, that you can make sense of? Uh, beyond 16 months of data is there, is there is there some hack that you have that could that could help us with this yeah well i mean just purely thinking back to just the examples that you mentioned obviously i worked in e-commerce prior and we found that when comparing year on year that we kind of just had to throw out 2020 because we had such a good year right. as an e-commerce site in 2020 purely because people were staying at home and all they were doing was online shopping so we had right. like a fantastic year in in 2020 um but then when you get to 2021 you kind of realize Ah, oh, okay. Sales sales are dropping and, and that kind of thing, and you trying to make sense of as to why you say, well, we did this much revenue in 2020, and you're like, yeah, but no one was working. Everyone was at home, and and I was at home for part of it. I was I was on furlough for a, for a short time, and all I was doing was online shopping. Right. So, uh, but yeah, the, the, yeah. In terms of going back over these 16 months of data, that we are really limited to that, and there there are still certain limitations even within the tool that we can only 
gather 16 months of data with the API. But one of the things that we've been able to do is, is we can, whilst we might not be able to run every report past 16 months, we can store the data for you. Right. So if you were to log into your dashboard, you've still got access to data from years ago, which is handy when you obviously can export it or you can just take a screenshot of the graphs or whatever. Because I remember previous to using SEO testing myself, the biggest thing I was having to do was just making sure all the data was backed up manually on a hard drive somewhere. <laughs> and it's yeah, you do all of the spreadsheet work. It's terrible. So exactly, okay. exactly. So again, it's just linking back to the core value of saving people time. We can, when we can save the data for you, we're going to do that. So you can, again, so whilst you might not be able to make use of the full functionality, if you're looking to get data from 24 months ago, you can, you can still access it in your dashboard and you can see what your figures were two years ago, yesterday. As long as the as long as the site's been there in the past, yeah. I think the last thing I would say about about testing and about this tool and about the, the topics we've talked about here today is that for, we're agency side, so I think in terms of a client. But feel free to, you know, stakeholder might be a better a better word for it. That in the last five or ten years, the knowledge of the from the stakeholder is much better. Yeah. So this may have even run some SEO campaigns in their life. And so where we used to have a little bit more of a, you know, one-on-one conversation with those people, now increasingly there's pressure to have data-driven conversations. But there's a higher standard, I think. Um, do you feel like there's more of an emphasis in, in your interactions with people? And how do you address, there's like very legitimate client or stakeholder concerns to have more of a data-driven conversation versus a uh, here's your organic traffic, here are your conversions kind of a conversation. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, I've, I've noticed that even when I was previously agency side, when I first started agency side, you could kind of, you had the conversations with maybe someone who'd never touched marketing before and they just want, they don't want to do it themselves. So that was like the biggest thing is here's how we can help you. Whereas towards the end of my time agency side, I think maybe thanks to the work of, you know, like blogs like Ahrefs and search engine land and then podcasts like these and maybe as much as I don't want to say it but like Neil Patel as well his success with his blog as well uh just making all this knowledge accessible to to people even if they work even if they don't work in SEO and they can still learn more about it and that's definitely been the I think one of the key driving factors for the change but yeah definitely there's been more of a uh, an emphasis on on data driven conversations to be had which is is handy like even if you don't use seo testing you can go back to uh you can show search console data or you can show analytics data from a while ago and you can say well we worked on this site and it worked in this way this is what we did and this is the impact it drove and that's i think that's the biggest thing when trying to sell seo to potential clients is showing that you've done it before and it's worked before and you can do the same again i love it um, all right. And then unless my, my research deceives me, you are an NBA fan. We are in the meat of the NBA postseason. Do you have a horse in this race? Who do you root for? And do you think they have a, a chance to win it all? Yeah. So, uh, uh, at the start of the season, I had a couple of horses in this race. I had, uh, I've, I've got family in Dallas. So, okay. uh, I will always say my first love are the Mavericks, but I also <laughs> have friends in Oakland. So naturally I'm now leaning towards the Warriors. So in game seven was a particularly stressful time for me, but uh, it out. Like, well, one of the yeah. best to ever play the point guard position. So yeah. hopefully he can just put the team on his back again and, and do it a bit more. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a, a, an interesting matchup against uh, LeBron and going to be it's one I'm excited to watch, whatever the outcome. Well, you you seem to follow teams who have getting some good luck because... Dallas had the big trade in the in the year, and then Golden State's won just about every year. So if you have any family in Detroit, Michigan, where I'm from, and <laughs> want to give give some luck to the Pistons, I wouldn't mind it. But uh, yeah, you, you can say look all you want for the Irving trade, but we didn't make the playoffs, <laughs> so it didn't work out in the end. <laughs> there you go. Well, listen, Ryan. Uh, before I let you go, get, kind of if people want to know more about you or SEO testing, where should they go? What's your favorite social media? That those sorts of details. Yeah. Always Twitter, so you can get me at Ryan Jones SEO. I'm always uh, always hanging around on there, always happy to talk SEO, NBA, NFL, all that kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, if anyone wants to hit me up there, they can do. And then uh, obviously I, I'm always retweeting and sharing any of SEO testing stuff as well. 
Awesome. Awesome. Well, I really enjoyed the conversation. Ryan, your your pleasure. I really like what you guys are doing, and we're going to watch carefully over the next couple of years, especially with your increased involvement. So for now, I'm going to give you a virtual cheers for everyone else watching. We'll be back next week with another episode of Sesson Search. Thanks, Ryan. Cheers. Thank you.